Hi everyone. I want to show today how I made these little book charms for my journals, junk journals. And here is one that says Duck. Um, it's one of my girls' nickname, um, Ducky. And um, I'm just going to do a quick little review on how I've done that. So that's how it looks. You can add chain, you can have it shorter. Um, but this is a charm I made. You can add a ribbon and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I added it to a paper clip. And you can just add more ribbon and that kind of thing. But I want to show you what, uh, how I made this cute little name charm today. So, some of the tools that you'll need. Some of the things you will need is a can. So I cut the can open. I use a sharp knife like this. Um, to cut the can open. You can wear gloves, um, leather type of gloves, something that will protect your fingers from the sharp edges. I am very careful. I don't use them, but um, perhaps you should. And then um, I use a hole punch for this one, and I use a half inch because that's perfect size for a little charm bead type of looking thing. And I am to make the holes in this one, you can do different things. You can use a uh, uh, crop a dial, but I use a all because I'm using um, a small one, a half inch, uh, half inch uh, circle. So then there's not a whole lot of room to make. Here's an L, whole lot of room to make a hole above and below this piece. So um, just to show you a close up, I use just regular paints and that kind of thing today. I um, in the past used my last video used metallic lusters. But this is just regular paint. Um, I did use um, a little bit of this, which is panel lining. And I do use this in my builds for my um, kits. But this is not a very expensive uh, dusty bottle. Um, and you can use that easily. Just dab a little bit, and I'll show you in there just a bit. And uh, you'll fill out your little lettering for you so you don't have to do too much um, fooling around to get it to come clear, come out. So, um, yeah, and then I will also show you that I use this gauge wire, which I don't have the gauge on it, but it's thin. You can kind of just go look at your wires when you buy them to make the rings to loops. Instead of buying loops, I, unless I'm making something for jewelry that's going to be on your body, the the this wire will be fine. Um, and I do have, you can use scrap jewelry. I did have some chain left over from some rolls that I bought in the past and beads. And um, I have one of these type of little things. And I only have this one I could find. I made uh, some beads. But you can use some of this to add some beads to and just make a little L shape at the end and flatten it out and do the same thing. You don't need to buy fancy stuff. So let's put this together. Um, another thing that I like to use is uh, I go to the dollar store and buy these corks. Um, I always have it on the side. I have these little pins that come from the ribbons and all that kind of stuff. I save them on the side if they're nice. Anyways, they're really good for making holes and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're a little bit more solid than the foam for other types of things that you want to do. But for this, you want something a little bit more solid. You don't want your piece sinking in. So I'm just going to grab my awl, push in on the top and the bottom of my lettering in the center so then it, it um, you don't want it too close to the edge so it breaks and this is just the pop can so it, it you can totally tear it if you want it to so you gotta kind of make it in the center so it's a little bit more stronger and I know my camera's far away. I have not been able to figure out how to put the webcam onto my computer and um, make it go closer, like to zoom in and all that. There's no, none of that going on here. This is directly on my um, movie maker type of thing here that I purchased a while back. And then here's her H. So this is how the letters all look just like this with the holes on top of each other. So we're going to go C, H, L, 
O E. That's how we do it. Um, now I'm going to show you guys how I make my little um, loops. So what I do is I grab a piece that I think I'm going to use how big it's going to be. How many I'm not sure, but you can make more. And I grab one of these jewelry maker uh, things, uh, <laughs> tools, and I'm just going to go around carefully and bend around and I'm going to make sure I leave my loop coming towards the flat part of as I'm twisting I'm not going to twist down this way because it might be my little chain is going to get smaller so I'm just going to make sure I see how I'm making sure I keep it on this side so it's always going to be the same size the ones that I've already made can go to the end they're not going to get any smaller because they've already been shaped so this is only a few here. But I'll have to make more. And then slowly turn it, slowly turn it. Get that in there, shape that. And keep going. I like to just go, you don't have to go if you have ice go. And then you get this kind of spring look. So I'm gonna do another one just to show you guys again and to make sure I have enough so I don't have to worry. So I'm just going to go around slow little little pieces like this. So you just keep going around again pushing it. Your thumb is guiding it and your finger is holding it against the tool. Your point your finger on the other side there and then you're just going around and opening closing making sure making sure you are shaping your your ring and you can do this with any metal um, this is aluminum and that's why I wouldn't wear it like do jewelry with it if you want to buy jewelry grade metal you can do the same thing um, if you're doing a few a few rings to attach jewelry pieces you can get jewelry wire. And that's how we do it. Right to the end. So I just, I get a little bit of indentation in my finger, but hey, it works. I don't have to buy a bunch of rings, especially if I'm not always doing the same project. So now I have a little bit extra. This one had a little bit more. And I'm going to go with my side of my cutters. Um, these are not the sharpest, but you can, you know, jewelry size ones and I'm going to go one ring at a time holding this and I'm just going to go cut cut might want to drop a few down go in so I'm using that end that I had as original guide this is obviously ends I'm cutting and you'll have one end piece that's always like the left left over of the loop there and now I have four rings on that one so that's good and I'm going to do the same thing with this one here I'm going to see I think I only have three on this one but it was a little shorter that's them all cut and there's that loop that we don't want that little end piece here this one was a little shorter so it's got three rings so we need one two three, four, five, about six rings. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think we have six enough. So here is what we have so far. So um, then we just get chaining up. I like to use a flat tool, a this one, and then we do the same thing as you do with a regular jump ring. And you um, don't pull apart, you twist. That looked like it was really rough, sorry, but um, the rounded part, oh, I had a piece of metal in there. The rounded part uh, slipped and I had a little piece chunk in there. So then I'm gonna go, just going to ring that through. And then I'm going to grab another jump ring for the top. I hopefully have enough. I can make more though, easy peasy. And close it up. I like to add a little extra jump ring because then it'll attach to my um, either chain or just to the paper clip itself depending on what you want so then I, I just because I 
I just push them a little close together after I close them because they are just newly made and the edges are not flat. Like when you buy jump rings, usually the edges are cut flat. And this is the one extra one I added that I didn't even open. It's just this is how much it's well, from cutting it's opened. I don't know if you can see that. but So now we're going to go into the next one. I have to open again and attach these and make sure that all of the letters are in order and uh, gonna face the right way. Here's my C and then I want to make sure my H is facing the right way so I put my H in CH perfect close that up and we're done we're done that one trying to do it a little bit away from how I would and see there's a teeny I don't know if you can see that teeny gap just because you just cut that with a wire cutter and it split it it did put pressure on a split and then I just put a little pressure and we have the C and the H okay so now we have the name all done C H L O E I put it on there I'm just going to show you quickly how I'm going to put together I have the last ring for the bottom I also have a ring for the top and I'm going to show you that I did cut a little piece here to add some beads to and to do whatever so you might have to figure out like the size of the wire um, if you have beads for that um, I'm just going to check the size here these will work do a couple I'm just going to do a couple of beads um, for this one and I'm just going to go in first of all I'm going to bend the end so I can just let it go because I don't have any more of the um, pins with the heads on them so I could just make it into a little L shape I'm going to really squish that down and I mean in a pinch it's still cute and it's only for a journal so it's going to be fine I'm going to actually just pull that in just a bit more I can even cut it a bit shorter if it's too long. You just need enough of an end so your bead doesn't fall through. And now here we go. Doesn't look too bad. I'm going to do that one. I actually think I'm not going to do that one first. I think I'm going to do this little diamond shaped one first. And then this really pretty clear one. And then this bead here. So that's the bead I'm going to put in the bottom. I'm going to again grab my, I think I'm going to cut this a little shorter. I don't need it that long. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to twist and make a ring. And then here's my ring. I'm just going to kind of cock it back and there we go. It's a little bit on the long side. You can shorten it up if you wish. This one is how I made that. Just a quick, easy one if you don't have any of the pre-made ones. So then I'm going to add, make sure my end's closed. I'm going to add this one to this jump ring that I made. Easy peasy. And put it on this last one, which I think I misplaced. Oh, no, I didn't misplace my pliers. And that's how you make a really fast, cute little um, piece for your junk journals. And also, too, because it's for your junk journals, it doesn't have to be perfect. And um, oh, that one I squished too much. That's not good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, so it's. Uh, that's why you get kind of get away with it. I over squished. That's why you kind of get away with using um, the the wires the way you do, or the way I do. I feel okay. I over squished this. I'm just gonna try to squish it back. There we go. It's not gonna be a perfect circle now because I did that. It'll be a little bit uh, a uh, uh, egg shape or whatever but there we go 
And now to work on the chain. Uh, I've decided to use a different type of chain. Uh, it's not so shiny this time, just because you can mix it up with this kind of thing. Um, and I want to add paint to it, regular um, paint, so it's going to be, I want it to look um, like older. Anyway, and I did do a nice dark bead on there, so I think the chain will suit it. So, it doesn't have to be matching. You can use old jewelry from different parts, um, different parts of old jewelry to make this chains and stuff, which will be really cool to recycle. There we go. There's that. We have, I believe, one more jump ring, and I'll grab, uh, I did use this one on um, a paper clip, but we can't add them to binding clips, so maybe I'll just use a binder clip this time. I'll use a pink color, just because, just because I have them here instead of turning around, and I meant to have it already, but I guess I didn't have a paper clip out. So again, just twisting a bit, and you can easily just take your little binder clip edge off too, but since I already have it open because I added the chain, I could just throw that on, and there we go. And actually, because I did it straight, I don't even have to, I could kind of just flatten it out like this because I did it perfectly straight. I didn't pull it apart so I can actually just hold it and squish it together like that. Just like that. And now I have this on here and I can add ribbon or whatever to my binder clip. Oh, somehow I missed my E. How did I do that? I'll be right back. And this is it. So I um, have my C H L O E. No, I, I can't believe I forgot her E. But anyways, that's her charm, and that's gonna be super cute. So now I could just paint that up and enjoy. So with the panel lining, I just wanted to show you. Um, I, if you're gonna do any of these kind of in um, stamping with these things on the cans, and you're gonna think you're, that's something you're gonna do, it's not very expensive, and so it's worth getting. Um, just to show you how it works. Here's the C. You dab it on there. It goes right around the letter. See? Here's the H. I think I'll have to do a couple little dabs just because there's a lot of... But there's a little brush on the end here. And look at that. So I don't have to like add the paint and rub it all off like I normally do, which I didn't think about this, but then I was like, hey, I have an easy way to do this. This is the panel lining that I use for my kit. Pretty easy. And there's my E. Didn't even make a mess. Did it all like that. See? You can leave it even like that. Um, if you get a mess of it, you just use a Q-tip and go over it. And if you let it dry, you can use a Q-tip with a little alcohol or whatever to go over it if, to clean it off if you if it smudged. But look at that. I didn't even have to make a mess with paint. So I'm going to let that dry a bit, or you can use a heat tool, and then add whatever paint you want to it after. And I think it's super cute. In fact, I think this one, I might just ink it up a little bit and leave it like it is. So what I'm going to use is some stays on. This is stamp Stampology, and I am going to probably just try to ink it up a bit. Do something a little different than Kendra's, and just ink my edges a bit. I, I don't find my edges sharp or anything, and this is going to be going on a journal, so... I've never injured myself with any of these things that I have made, so... And that's that. I think this one is going to stay like this. I was going to add some acrylic paint, um, but I think I'm not going to now. So, because I just happen to like how this one is looking different than than the other one. Um, I might use my metallic lusters or something for Cora's, and that is how Ken uh, Chloe's is looking. Kendra's got um, I got some um, raw umber on hers just to make it look a little more old. 
I like it and I use this silver um, chain on that one so it's whatever you want we can add some ribbon to that I just kind of like the look of it right now the way it is so I don't want to add and I don't care about the back being whatever the the can soda can has on it so and that is how it dried just to show you guys how the lettering dried just now like right in front of our eyes so I didn't do anything to it didn't stop the video to dry it so it looks really nice you can do another layer if you want it darker super cute let's see if I want to add a little inking to my clip I could do that this is permanent ink so we'll see how how that works on here never done it age it up a bit I like it there we go pretty cute now just to add a little bit of interest I had some of these pieces of fabric and I did tear some of them and make a little to make a little um, something <laughs> Oh, that one didn't work out. S threads or pieces to add to the clips. Just for something a little different. You can add ribbons and strings and wool and all that kind of stuff. Eyelash um, lace and all that kind of stuff. Eyelash trim. But I thought it would be fun to do a little something different. So here's to match the blue and the pink for Chloe's name. I'm grabbing some of that. And I'm just going to tie that onto her her thing here so nice end pieces make really fun little things so I'm just going to push this one through since it's pretty thick like ribbon like the way I tore it I can just pull that through and have a little extra something for the back of my for my little design here that I made. Yay! Here we go. So that's how that looks. Let's try it up on a journal. Here's a journal I did not finish um, designing and decorating yet. So it's pretty plain. And you can just clip it on. And here we go. It could be either way. It'll flip around and all that kind of stuff. But you can see that Chloe's names on there. Look at the, the material and the end pieces. I like all the mess look. It looks really nice and it looks good with both sides of her her um, trim that I added. So that looks really nice for a jump journal. And we will do the next one. And that is that guys. This one because I have the orange I wanted to get a piece of material fabric with orange in it. And I think the girls are going to love this pattern. Um, I've got green, blue, or green and the red one in this one. And we're going to do the same thing. I like using different things. I like using ribbon and all that kind of stuff too, but sometimes it's nice to throw something a little different, different texture, which is super cute. There we go. So now, um, depending on which way we want this to slide. Oh, I might want to slide it this way. <laughs> we'll see here now. Who knows? And we'll put that in there and here we go. For, for Kendall's, for ducks. Ducky! Isn't that cute? It goes with the beads, so I think it's cute. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed these this little project and uh, give it a try and let me know what you guys think. Bye for now. Don't forget to craft like a duck.